Good afternoon. This is Brian Hodson uh, from Oz Development, and welcome to the session on extending UPS World Chip in your pick-pack ship operation. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I realize everyone's uh, pretty busy. And just from a logistics standpoint, a couple things we're going to go through. Everyone is muted uh, just to avoid uh, background noise and those sort of things. If you do have questions, please use the toolbar. There's a question section to submit them. We will address questions, you know, potentially as we go, and we do have a session, uh, some time at the end of the session, uh, where we will answer questions we can't get to uh, as we're going through the session. Um, so today we're just going to give a quick, very quick overview of Oz development. Uh, then we're going to talk about some customer case studies, some real customer examples uh, where they have uh, leveraged WorldShip and, and done some extensions to create some cost savings and operational efficiencies in their warehouse. Uh, and now with the emergence and sort of the growth of e-commerce and trying to tie that into the warehouse, we'll give a couple of examples of different e-commerce models we see and how that fits into the pick, pack, ship process in the warehouse. Uh, and then we'll review various world ship extensions again, capabilities that customers have used to drive, um, you know, better serve their customers, lower costs in the warehouse, uh, you know, reduce labor, eliminate errors. Um, and ultimately drive cost savings and support the revenue growth. Um, we'll then do a quick demo, uh, and then we'll finish up with Q&A. Uh, and as I said, feel free to ask questions as we go. Uh, if, it's in, you know, if it's convenient to answer them based on the topic, we'll address them as we go through those. But we'll try to get to them all at the end of the session. We'll try to keep the session, again, to the 45 minutes that we advertised. So a quick overview of Oz development. Oz Development's been in the logistics shipping industry for over 10 years, working very close with UPS. Uh, we have over 10,000 customers, and they really range in a wide variety of different sizes and industries. Uh, could be small set of entrepreneurial companies. See a couple examples here, things like uh, Looney Labs, Doctors Best we'll talk about in a sec, uh, but also very large companies, Lowe's, Office Max. Uh, and we've been working very close with UPS. We Last year, we were elevated to the strategic level. So UPS has a technology partnership program that's called UPS Ready. Uh, and uh, the top tier is strategic, really reserved for uh, the partners that work most closely with UPS. And we're very proud of that and working alongside with uh, the, the UPS team. Essentially, we feel that if, based on the solutions we have, if someone ships with UPS, there's an opportunity to leverage some Oslink technology to improve the business, improve the operation. A couple of examples of customers where we have um, had some success. And the solution we're going to talk about mostly today is called Oslink Custom. Uh, there's four different uh, solutions within the Oslink for UPS family. We have some front office rating tools, we, and we also have some integration to WorldShip tools. Uh, Oslink Pro is an integration to WorldShip. Uh, out of the box with NetSuite and QuickBooks. And Oslink Custom is really the solution that can integrate to you know, over 20, 25 different hosts and provide these world chip extensions we're going to talk about today. Uh, so that's the focus of today's session. Uh, some customer success. Ovation Hair is a customer of, of um, ours jointly with UPS. And they had a the NetSuite operation, and they're running with a separate, the, the process in the back was a pick pack ship process. They produced a pack slip. Uh, they would print those off. Uh, they would uh, do the picking, create the labels. Mac, picking and, and matching up the label with the UPS uh, with the pack slip became an issue. And somehow they, sometimes those would get mixed up. Sometimes the data entry into WorldShip would be an issue. So what we end up doing is providing a combination pack slip UPS label, we call it. And you'll see an example of that later. But it really streamlined that process. Um, uh, and cut down on those errors. So matching up the label with the pack slip, uh, streamlining the data entry, getting information back into NetSuite um, from uh, getting the cost and the tracking information back in, that completely got automated and streamlined. Um, another example is PackEdge uh, customer. Uh, they did uh, the high growth, high technology company. They were running Microsoft Dynamics. And their process was fairly manual in terms of the operation um, uh, in, in entering data into um, 
uh, world chip and then entering the tracking costs back into Microsoft Great Plains. One of the key things they did as part of that uh, integration, and, and when we integrate with UPS world chip, we do these extensions and, and sort of add-on capabilities. And in this case, what they added was a branded email that when they processed that shipment, uh, the uh, customer would get an email with the package branding and messaging of confirming not only the fact that it shipped with the tracking, but the actual items that were in that order. Uh, again, cutting down on calls, reinforcing their customer, their relationship, and their brand. Uh, Dr. Beth, another example, fairly similar from a process standpoint to uh, Ovation Hair in terms of the combo, a different back-end host. Um, so, and, and a number of the extensions and, and business rules you see here today uh, are independent of the back-end host. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's four different solutions uh, for Auslink for UPS. Uh, the two at the bottom are front office rating tools, uh, and Auslink for UPS plus the second up from the bottom left is a more advanced tool. It also has a, an elegant batch capability with Excel. So right from Excel, you can rate shipments, uh, you can track shipments in a batch process. Um, as I mentioned, the top two are world chip integrations. Auslink for UPS Pro is out of the box with either QuickBooks or NetSuite, and the way it works is it pulls information out of the host, uh, writes it to WorldChip, the shipments process in WorldChip, the tracking and costs are written back into, again, QuickBooks or NetSuite. Um, the difference with Auslink Custom is it can really be integrated to virtually any host, provide integration to the, to the host in the back end, the ERPs, which I'll have a slide on the various experience we have but also in with e-commerce applications, so things like Groupon and Magento. Um, and the key thing with custom is being able to add extensions and business rules, which we'll talk about quite a bit today. The Auslink Custom um, has a setup uh, implementation really based on the customer, ability to customize and, and really tailor it to a particular customer's environment. As I mentioned, at a high level, uh, integrating WorldChip in with uh, various e-commerce applications, ERP, uh, providing, uh, eliminating the data entry of those of that process, um, integrating e-commerce both from an order standpoint, but also updating the tracking information, uh, and then the warehouse extensions, so things like a branded email, a branded pack slip, those are things that I'll talk a, bit, a fair bit more about with some concrete examples. Um, and then finally, automating the shipping rules. So are you using the right UPS service for that particular shipment? Uh, you know, should there be insurance turned on? Those sort of things. So this represents the uh, host that we've integrated to. Some examples on the right are your traditional uh, ERP accounting host. And it really ranges, again, in based on customer size. So the smaller, typical smaller companies might be using QuickBooks or Peachtree. So the mid-sized account that customer often using things like Sage, NetSuite, uh, right up to enterprise customers and integrating with things like Oracle and SAP. Uh, on the left is where we see growth in terms of um, people expanding their e-commerce and usually there's more than one of these applications often involved. Uh, Magento is fairly popular from a shopping cart standpoint and Volusion, uh, but if people are selling through marketplaces they may you know, be pulling orders in from eBay uh, or Amazon, or maybe leveraging Channel Advisor as that bridge to to their to their marketplaces. Uh, we have a Groupon example here, which is I think pretty interesting. It's a newer um, use case that we've seen and in an integration. Uh, but again, and then there's some interesting logistics um, you know, challenges with handling those volumes in a, in a fairly rapid fashion. So the categories in terms of extensions to UPS WorldChip uh, really fall into three categories. Uh, E-commerce automation, uh, so you know, getting that order in from the say, Magento or e-commerce site, feeding that into, integrating that into the order management process. Now as that's happening, there's an opportunity as you're putting it potentially in the ERP, are there any rules that you might want to employ? So are there orders maybe over a certain amount that might need approval or review prior to the release into the warehouse? Uh, potentially address validation, um, uh, making sure that that's correct up front before you go and pick back ship that process. Doing that at, uh, at the beginning of the process is much more you know, 
cost-effective solution. Uh, or potentially things like routing, looking at you know, if there's multiple locations of a, uh, if you have multiple locations, different warehouses, west coast, east coast, and you get an order in, should it be fulfilled uh, based on inventory or maybe time in transit uh, of the UPS services, which warehouse is the best to fulfill that order? So those are some rules that can be added on top of the e-commerce automation. Uh, within the warehouse, uh, we have some more concrete examples here, so I will go through this quickly, but things like branded pack slips, uh, customized emails, the combo pack I talked about, pack validation. That's a, that's a good example where we've had customers um, you know, cutting down, if it, you know, cost of, of shipping out the wrong item, uh, depending on the business, can be anywhere from you know, $35, $50 in order. Uh, we have a customer who uh, they had a couple shipments uh, a month where they shipped the wrong piece of equipment. They, they, they'd had heavy equipment uh, that they were uh, shipping out to their customers. And, and a couple times a month, uh, they would show serialized uh, items, and, they may, and the models looked similar. And by accident, they might do that a couple times a month. Now, that doesn't seem you know, high frequency, given they had probably three, 400 orders a month. But each one, because it's heavy, the shipping costs are expensive, they figured it cost them about $1,500 each time. So being able to do some basic pack validation, a barcode scan, confirming that what's on the order is getting shipped out. Again, that might be item numbers. It might include uh, serial numbers, those sort of things, or capturing the serial numbers so you have it uh, to really cut down on those errors and eliminate those costs. It can be a dramatic cost savings. Um, and then on the business rules uh, dimension, the third area where you can provide extensions are you know, basically looking at the attributes that ship and, and making sure that the right UPS services used uh, to service that customer most effectively and most cost in, in the most cost effective way. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, we were seeing a fair bit of growth and in, in, in re requests to integrate shopping carts and e-commerce platforms into the world ship environment. And, and we see two different models uh, that customers approach us with. On the left is what we call channel centric. And often these customers are up and growing, high growth. They were, I call them sort of born on the web. They started maybe selling on eBay, or they just have a, they have their own website, and that's their primary growth channel. That's where they uh, really, you know, drive 100% of their business. And what they often want to do is integrate those orders directly into WorldShip um, and populate back tracking number. Uh, very, you know, fast, high growth companies, agile. On the right. Uh, typically what we call order centric often these are more mature companies larger companies they have a sales force that's maybe taking phone orders or they're getting email or fax orders putting those into the ERP system but they've also added some e-commerce channels and those are maybe making up you know anywhere from 5 to 20 30 percent of their sales but they're important element higher growth their element and they want to integrate that in to their ERP which is really their order management process, and, and keep track of, obviously, you know, consolidates across those channels from an inventory standpoint, item standpoint, um, and then they're integrating WorldShip into that ERP. Of course, when that gets processed, they still need to update those e-commerce channels and base in, in important things like tracking information. Uh, so we have a couple uh, case studies of each of those scenarios. In this case, uh, this is a customer uh, of ours. Royal Oak Peanuts, they had a front-end store, front running Magento. Uh, they were running QuickBooks in the, from an accounting perspective and world ship tracking. And, and before we worked with them, they were basically taking the orders out of Magento, typing them manually into QuickBooks, uh, and then when they went to fulfill those orders, they would be typing them into the world ship, process the orders, type the tracking number back into Magento so the customer has visibility to that. Uh, and then updating the cost and tracking again manually back into QuickBooks. With Auslink, we integrated these three systems seamlessly together so the orders flow straight from Magento into QuickBooks. If there's a new customer, uh, they get added into QuickBooks as well as the order and create the sales order in QuickBooks. That then is processed in the warehouse. Again, the information is pulled real time from QuickBooks into WorldShip, shipments processed in WorldShip, and then uh, cost and tracking written back into QuickBooks, and only the tracking at that same time, real time, is written back into Magento. So it's dramatic cost savings in terms of labor and also errors in terms of you know the same data is flowing through, uh, so there's no keying errors, no 
cut down on fulfillment errors and, and allowed them to support some growth uh, without adding any sort of staff or, or clerical staff to help support that. Um, and with their Magento and e-commerce, they saw additional growth really beyond their sort of core traditional markets, you know, uh, now across the U.S. A second example, a little more channel-centric, is uh, Groupon. And we've seen this a few times now, uh, quite recently, where you know, Groupon has launched Groupon Goods. So promoting goods, and they run an event, um, and the customers, you know, this customer in particular, had you know, maybe doing 75, 100 orders a day. They run a Groupon event, and they get 500 orders that they have to fulfill in a couple days. Uh, and you know, the response time back to commitment from a, a Groupon standpoint, both technical in terms of updating things like the tracking, uh, also logistics, providing a Groupon branded pack slip you can see here, uh, and then also fulfilling it in a timely fashion. Uh, so what we did here is, Groupon has a technology called Commerce Interface that provides the, uh, the vendor with their orders that the customer spot. And we basically pull that and run a batch process and look at what are the, what are the shipping uh, rules, what's the best shipping option from a UPS perspective. And we create on the right here this combination Groupon Goods branded pack slip with the UPS label on the bottom, integrated 8.5 by 11. And then update again that that uh, that batch file from Commerce Interface with the with the shipping information and the tracking information. Uh, and if they think from a warehouse logistics standpoint and the Groupon business model, those 500 orders over the next couple of days, a have to get out quickly. But the, the the batch process works exceptionally well because it's typically again one good that's going to 500 different customers. You know the customer knows the weight. So being able to create that label up front in the batch process becomes very efficient. Now taking those uh, stack of, of pick slips with UPS label out to the warehouse, the picking process, apply that label, uh, and get it out the door very effectively. And again, the customer has that visibility through Groupon to their tracking number, uh, you know, when it's shipped, all those sort of things. And they get their shipment with the you know, mandated Groupon branded pack slip. So from a compliance standpoint with Groupon, that's another requirement that's met. And we see a fair bit of growth in this. And this, you know, back to the other models, this tends to be, um, you know, again, more channel-centric. The, the customers often will end up updating their ERP with this just a consolidated total number of, hey, this Groupon event generated this sort of revenue, really from a financial standpoint rather than logistics. Uh, so we showed you an example of the combination pack slip. Um, and so... One of the extensions here, and this is probably the most common uh, module that's an extension to WorldShip for Auslink, is uh, providing on the top you see a branded packs that can have your customer, your, your own logo on it, uh, maybe some additional uh, information about you know how to handle returns, anything like that, and then the UPS label on the bottom. Uh, we also have a customer that does gift baskets, uh, and that originally they had three documents. They had the pick slip, they had the, the UPS label, and they had an optional note, greeting note, or that went with that gift basket. Um, and you know, one of the challenges they had was they'd produce all those three documents in the front office, take them to the back warehouse. They sometimes get mixed up. Uh, and again, you know, you know, from a logistics standpoint, mixing up the labels, obviously sending the wrong thing to the wrong person, it becomes um, you know costly. Maybe lose that customer, or even just mixing up the wrong greeting or, or greeting note. Again, just drives customer satisfaction. So, in addition to the label for that scenario, we also put the, uh, the the greeting note on that same document. Again, dramatically cut down on any of those fulfillment uh, shipping errors. Um, another use case for this is uh, including both an outbound label and a return label. So, the outbound label is obviously applied at, at pick time, uh, pick pack ship time and then it's folded, the packs that's put in with the return label on it, uh, and the customer, it just facilitates the customer return. Um, you know, uh, a third scenario is maybe just providing um, a QR code that links you and creates the label on the fly when they run a return from your website. The advantage there is you're driving customers back to your website, potentially maybe instead of returning it, they do an exchange, uh, retain that business, 
uh, maybe buy some additional things. Uh, so again, being able to merchandise and, and sell additional items to that customer. So those are a few different flavors leveraging uh, this document. Again, that top part uh, is uh, definable by you, uh, and Auslink populates the order information. Uh, on the left here, a couple other examples of branded email. Uh, beyond sort of standard quantum view notify, what we can do here is, again, a nice, elegant, reinforces the customer brand. There can be promotional QR codes, uh, coupons, uh, you know, tons of marketing opportunity. But also from a customer perspective, in addition to the tracking information, you know, the actual items that they ordered uh, can be included as that information comes across from the host. We can populate into the template. Uh, and again, there may be you know, different templates you want to use based on rules, based on customer. Uh, maybe you know, premium uh, type customer might get more offers and more coupon type things. Those are, those are business rules that we can tie in and leverage different templates for this. Um, on the right, we've talked about different branded packs. But this is a drop ship scenario. Customer maybe have a couple big customers they're drop shipping on behalf. Here's you know Sears and J.C. Penney. Again, automating that process so that you're not in the back in the warehouse remembering oh this you know based on this flag we're going to actually fill out a, a J.C. Penney pack slip versus Sears. Really streamlining, automating that process. Um, you know, again another customer that hadn't automated. They had some temporary staff. And by accident, you know, there was a Sears order, and they used a J.C. Penney pack slip to deliver that. Uh, you know, inevitably the customer then was confused. They thought maybe their, um, you know, credit card got got uh, compromised. They were they didn't have confidence. They ended up phoning Sears. Sears phoned the customer, uh, and really put some of their you know bigger one of their bigger accounts at risk from a revenue standpoint. So the general philosophy is to streamline uh, and automate the process as much as possible, um, and really leave. You know, focus the warehouse, the shipping staff on getting the goods out the door, uh, uh, and really operational rather than you know having them make decisions or remember business rules either you know uh, from from their head or things that are written on, on stickies around the ship station or in the pack in the packing area. Um, uh, one other scenario that we see is customers who are and just leveraging. You know, different locations, or even just where the where the package is going to, the shipment's going to, to use the to to uh, upgrade or downgrade the UPS service. On the left is a cost savings opportunity where the original uh, shipment was scheduled to to, to use UPS two day, um, whereas based on where the warehouse was, where the customer was, there was an opportunity to lower it to ground based on time and transit, still get it there in time. Um, that's a cost savings opportunity. On the right is sort of the flip side of that, where you know, maybe getting it there by a certain date. We have a, uh, a customer, Malibu Boats, that does spare parts to boat owners, and one of the things they wanted to do is leverage, make sure that within a couple of days they got that part out, get that boat back on the water from a customer satisfaction standpoint. So if there's a glitch, you know, an extra day or, or time to process that order in the warehouse, they can upgrade that to a more premium service and make sure they meet that customer need. Um, similar scenario where we have customers shipping to retailers, where the retailer needs to get it, they have a, a required delivery date, can't be beyond that date, can't be early. Again, lining up at ship time, being able to check that time in transit, picking, uh, aligning with that either required date or lowering the cost, and doing that automatically without sort of a lot of any thinking required, just making sure that that's automated. And finally, some business rules. So business rules essentially are looking at the attributes of that shipment. And those might be things like uh, the details. Could be weight, for example, things under four, you know, over four pounds going to go UPS Brown, under four pounds and residential are going to go uh, SurePost, maybe under pound mail innovations. Uh, other items, things like value, if you're, you know, maybe jewelry or or more expensive items, electronics, you may want proof of delivery or turn on insurance. All those sort of things can be automated uh, as part of that uh, integration into WorldShip. Uh, might be based on the on the on the person who's being shipped to the buyer. They maybe they're they're a frequent uh, customer, uh, so you want to provide them a premium. You know, again, maybe expedite that delivery for them, but charge them uh, the economy rate or the ground rate. Um, 
or it might be based on where the shipment's going to from a destination address. Maybe it's a more urban environment, can't leave it on the doorstep, again, you want proof of delivery. Uh, but essentially, any of those attributes can be uh, automated with Auslink business rules, and the output basically is picking the right UPS service and the right UPS options, uh, again, to you know, optimize that balance between customer satisfaction and logistics and, com and cost. So now we're going to do um, a, a quick little uh, demo, uh, and Justin Donahue is going to do that. We're going to give a, uh, an example of how this works in action. Good afternoon. Thanks, Brian. Really appreciate it. Um, this particular demonstration that we have um, for you folks today is uh, part of our Oslink Pro solution. And just give us a quick sec here to show my screen. <clears throat> uh, so here at the top of the screen, you'll see our Oslink toolbar. And this solution specifically is designed to pull order information out of QuickBooks, process it through UPS WorldShip, and bring back all of the pertinent shipment details into QuickBooks. I have two examples I'd like to share with you today. The first is a third-party billing scenario where we're going to bill a uh, shipment to um, one of our vendors or one of our clients' uh, shipper number in sort of a drop shipment scenario. So by entering that particular shipment number into the UPS toolbar and clicking the UPS icon here, I think it's going to programmatically pick up all the information from this sales order, process it across into UPS WorldShip, passing over the weight if it exists within the ERP. <clears throat> As you can see here, we've selected to build this particular transportation to third party. So as we go ahead um, and do that, we'll see that the information has been populated here with that shipper number that exists within QuickBooks and all the uh, shipment details that associate with that particular account number. By clicking my process shipment button here, Auslink will then go ahead and pass back all the tracking information. As you can see here, the tracking number exists within the QuickBooks order. Important to note that in the third party scenario, this zero charge exists, of course, because we build their shipper number. So clearly we don't want the shipping charges to correlate to their invoice as well. Secondarily, uh, Auslink has the ability to grab commodities information for your international shipments, for your commercial paperless invoice. If we go ahead and grab another transaction that contains that data and pull it across in the UPS world chip, we'll go ahead and see that the customs documentation tab is now available within UPS world chip. And if I just kind of take the scroll bar here and move across, you'll see that in the background, this particular order has, <coughs> excuse me, has a hockey stick on it um, here, and we've now put all that commodities data within the WorldShip software here. As we go back and process our shipment, once again, Auslink will programmatically pick up all of the information regarding the shipment, pass it back into the system of record, in this case QuickBooks, and as you can see in this particular scenario, this is an outbound shipment, so we've gone ahead and built this particular uh, carrier charge to the sales order. That, in a nutshell, is the operation of Oslink Pro. Uh, you know, if you have any more questions, certainly um, feel free to pose them in the questions bar. Okay. Um, let's just get the control back. Great, thanks, Justin. And so that brings us to the end of the session. We do have a number of questions that have come in, uh, and we'll step through those. If you have additional questions, feel free to uh, submit them now. Uh, and one of the questions was, will the slides be, uh, be available? We will email out the slides and a recording of the session to all the attendees today. Uh, so uh, a question related to the, to the logistics. Could you provide an explanation of batch processing? So batch processing 
where customers looking at maybe shipping 25 or 50 of quite often it's the same item uh, and they're producing uh, in a basically select those orders might be on a, in a NetSuite environment um, or uh, an Excel environment and producing all often it's it, we use it in conjunction with that combination bat, uh, pack slip UPS label document they NAP combo uh, document uh, and instead of basically processing the pack slip and the shipping label one at a time doing it in you know, one fell swoop so with a single sort of process within Auslink we can go and create you know 20 or 30 or whatever whatever the right batch number is for your warehouse and produce those documents and then maybe take them out they get processed pick pack shipped uh, again that they, they may get pick pack shipped you know multi together uh, with maybe more master pick but often it's they get pick pack shipped one at a time it's really processing those orders out of the ERP and in conjunction with world ship in a batch process. Um, let's see. Um, are we able to copy? Uh, please explain your address validation process. Uh, and there's a couple of options. In the, in the free tool, Auslink for UPS and Auslink for UPS Plus, uh, we have, we leverage, there's a, a UPS API that does address validation, uh, and we leverage uh, that capability within those tools to basically provide either city-state zip or street-level validation depending on the addition uh, and then provide options and suggestions of, of doing that correction. Uh, in the custom environment, uh, typically we would need a, uh, it will depend on the ERP, but we may look at, for example, in QuickBooks, there's a set of orders that might be flagged, not ready to release, run through and do a batch process on those orders in this case, batch means just looking at maybe all those orders that have been flagged for review, running them against that UPS API, and then highlighting which ones uh, might need review and editing to make sure that they, their address is correct and valid based on uh, what comes back from the UPS API. Um, and to be clear, it's not really address cleansing as much as validation and checking. Uh, those corrections usually take some you know manual review, but the ones that are clean. Uh, then get released and, and uh, sent through, through the uh, fulfillment process. Um, okay. Um, another question. Is there support offered to set up integration for Pro and Custom? Uh, so um, Pro is pre-integrated to QuickBooks and NetSuite, so basically customers can go and just activate that right from the Oz development website. Uh, the monthly subscription uh, for Pro is $29.95, and that includes support, so phone support, uh, email support, even phone. Uh, there's no setup fees, and the integration has that's pre-built, so there's no additional uh, sort of cost to do it, it, uh, other integrations. Now, often customers will start there, and then as they get efficiencies from that integration, uh, especially if they're starting in a more manual process where nothing was integrated, QuickBooks or NetSuite wasn't integrated, uh, or they're coming from a different host, they would leverage Auslink uh, to do both the integration, and in this case it would be custom, plus maybe some of the extensions we talked about, an email, branded email, combo pack slip, branded pack slip. In that case, uh, basically what we do is we have a call with the customer just to review the business process, make sure there's any business rules around picking the right UPS service. We capture those. We produce a, a scope document uh, and a quote, and the customer then has complete, you guys have complete transparency too. Uh, what the options are. Uh, and then again, that has a uh, $99 a month subscription fee, and that covers maintaining the integration, again, all the online support, phone support uh, to provide. So if thing, you know, as WorldShip gets upgraded, that gets detected and the system continues to run. Um, okay. Um, Here's a question. How does Auslink integrate with UPS's own Crossware product solution? Um, it typically doesn't. Um, it might be um, sort of an alternative. And there's a couple you know, things that uh, Auslink does in terms of um, differences uh, with Crossware. Auslink has a dynamic update uh, capability. So if there's changes to the host application, QuickBooks, if QuickBooks is upgraded or, or the the backend host changes, that's detected by the Auslink cloud and the adapter and there's updates that, that happen dynamically 
uh, to the integrations, that integration continues to work. Uh, so that's probably the biggest uh, just a difference uh, in terms of those capabilities. And then some of the sort of out of the some of the, the extensions we talked about um, are sort of module widgets in the Auslink kit for Auslink custom that can be added. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I think um, you know, any Fortune 500 company signed up. Uh, again, we have customers. We have, you know, joining with UPS, we have over 10,000 joint customers, and they span everything from Fortune 500 to sort of small entrepreneurial companies. Uh, might be less than a million dollars in revenue, the company, but really spans that whole spectrum um, uh, of customers. Let's see, some any other questions? Um, are there any corporate uh, business discounts available? And another question related to CTP. All of the Auslink solutions are CTP eligible. Uh, that's something that you should work directly with the UPS rep on. Um, and then in terms of corporate business discounts, and it, you know, we should you know, understand what the requirements are around custom, uh, work with you to make sure that, that we're solving the, you know, optimizing the right things and automating the right processes. From that, we can give you a, a quote. Uh, and then work from there would, would make sense to really get payback. We typically see uh, in our customers, uh, customers get payback uh, anywhere from, you know, if documented case studies of, you know, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year up to $300,000 a year in, in cost savings with Auslink Custom. Uh, let's see if there's any other. I think that, uh, I mean, there's a number of questions on getting the, getting the, uh, PowerPoint and recording those things. So I think we'll wrap it up here with those questions. If you do, if you um, certainly if you have other questions beyond uh, that have come up today, uh, you can send a note to sales at ozdevelopment.com. We also have a website ozdevelopment.com slash UPS ready, which has a whole set of YouTube videos and customer examples with case studies uh, that show um, you know, other customers have used it, different backend hosts, uh, data sheet and pricing, you know, a lot of information there uh, to, that you can just, you know, browse and, and leverage at your, at your um, convenience, share that with people who might, you know, need more information. But again, of course, anytime send a note to us and, and we can uh, see how we might help you guys. So appreciate your time today. Uh, as I said, everyone today will get a copy of the slides and a recording and uh, look forward to the next session. We try to do these about once a month. Thank you very much.